Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Come on, let's give our God a hand of praise. Yeah, we're grateful and thankful to see each and every one of you this morning and those of you who are tuned in. Let's bow and ask God's blessings upon our time. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. Thankful for yet another day. As we survey the land of this past week, we can see your hand of mercy where you kept us in the midst of it all. We can see God that after the hurricane has passed, things are starting to come back together. Yes, we're still a long ways off, but progress is being made. And God, whenever we can experience progress, we ought to be able to say thank you. It's amazing to me how we forget, how we take for granted the little things in life, how we overlook electricity, how we overlook running water, how we overlook a refrigerator filled with food how we overlook food in the cabinets how we overlook a stove a microwave thank you for helping us to see you're in the small things you're in the little things. You're in the insignificant things. You're in the things that we overlook. We say thank you. Oh, we say thank you. Because God, it sure is a whole lot better when you're in the insignificant things. Why would you say that, preacher? Because we are insignificant also. And if it had not been for your significance in our lives, none of us would be in this place. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your majesty. Please look and have mercy on this, our country. God is all in turmoil. And we want to put it on the president or we want to put it on the governor. But can I say this? It's on us all of us because you've already told us if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray turn from their wicked ways seek my face then i will hear from heaven and i will heal the land we can't get a healing because we won't humble ourselves so we ask that you be in this service that we offer to you our humble praise and worship be with us now in the marvelous matchless name of the master, Jesus, the Messiah, our Christ, our elder brother. Can all the saints say amen? Amen. Come on, put your hands together while God fills this place with his spirit. As I look out, I see each and every one of you, and I know that there's evidence there will be glory after this. Hey, come on! Let's sing. Oh, there will there will be glory after this. There will there will be victory. Let's go. 
This song says, I made it out. I made it out all right. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I made it. Anybody glad you made it? Come on, clap your hands up for singing. I made it out. I made it out.
this week, I want you to tell yourself, say, I made it. I made it. it. No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to make it. I made it. I made it. it. I had loved ones to leave me, but I still made it. I made it. it. I've been let go from a job, but I made it. I made it. it. I may not have any money in the bank, but I made it. I made it. it. I made it because God kept me this far. I made it. I made it. I made it it out. the reason why we made it is simply because God is God. Do I have any witnesses? When? When I come into his presence, I humble myself, lift up both my hands and I
He is excellent, isn't he? I said, he is excellent, isn't he? Come on, give this praise team another hand of praise for sharing with us this morning. What a gift. What a gift. What a gift. I'd like to invite you to the Gospel of St. Matthew. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 10. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 10. I want to read two verses of scripture, uh, verse 22 and verse 23. If you have it, say amen. If you're still looking, say wait a minute. All right, we're all there. Amen. All men will hate you because of me. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted, it does not say if you are persecuted. It says when you are persecuted. In one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. If you don't mind, would you repeat after me? It's all because of him. Amen. You may be seated. It's all because of him. When we look at the gospel of Mark, chapter 13 verse 13 it says all men will hate you because of me but he who stands firm to the end will be saved that's the comparative verse for our text today and I shared with you last Sunday from Matthew chapter 5 Verse 43 through 48. And I shared with you that Jesus said in the Beatitudes, love your enemies. Amen, somebody. And I said to you, when you look at the historical record and you examine what the Bible says when it talks about hate, The Bible is clear that when it says hate, you ought to have a disdain for that person. But then Jesus comes on the scene and he says, I want you to love them and not hate them. We ought to be saying amen to the New Testament. But then I shared with you, when you become a child of God and you understand the biblical record, you should have a higher response when people hate you. And because of that higher response, you ought to have a holier reaction. So that now that you're saved, you don't act the way you used to act. You don't do to them what you used to would have done to them. And as a result of that, I said, it then brings about a healthier respect. Because what happens is it makes you healthier when you learn how to treat those who hate you with love and compassion. Can you say amen right there? So when we look at this text, Sister Iris, Jesus is speaking to disciples. He's not talking to the crowd. He's talking to disciples. Disciples are learners of Jesus Christ. So if Jesus was speaking to disciples, I would like to speak to disciples today. I'm not speaking to everybody, just disciples. Just those who are learners. 
because some of you haven't been by Sunday school since you were a child. Some of you haven't been by Bible study since you were in vacation Bible school. I'm talking to the disciples, though those who are learners, those who make their daily activity a part of reading writing and taking notes from the holy writ people who are learners from the behavior of christ and what is written in the word of god i want to talk to disciples i'm not talking to church members because the church members are still cussing and still fussing i'm talking to disciples because the church members come to church sometime and they don't come to church sometime Church members go to ball games but won't come to church. I'm talking about church members. They have their name on the roll but they won't give any money. But when they die, they want to have their funeral at the church. And they want to have a repast. And then they want to have three people get up and talk about as a Christian, as a member, so forth and so on. And they're all lying. I'm talking to disciples. Amen. There are two things Jesus gives to these disciples. And this is where I think the problem comes in. First of all, he gives them authority. Look at verse 1. He, he gives them authority. And the second thing that he gives them, and I really think this is a problem, instructions. Because see, if you have the authority that God has given you, you need to know how to use the authority that you've been given. And most of us in here who have the authority of God don't have the instructions that go with the authority. Most of us try to live our life the way I like to build stuff and put stuff together that my wife buys. My wife buys stuff that you have to put together and they have a little book in there to tell you how to put together. And I don't like to read the book. I like to put it together. And then when I find extra pieces, then I go and look at the directions to see where these extra pieces go. I'm trying to help somebody. You don't read the Bible. You just wait till things fall apart and things are loose and you have extra pieces. Then you want to check and see what the directions say. So I, I looked at this passage and he said, he called the 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to do what? Look in your Bible. Look at what it says. Drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Here's the problem. The disciples have the authority. Now, authority is not the same as power. See, you can have authority but not power. See, the president has authority but he doesn't have power. Did you get that? And Jesus says, if you are a child of God, if you are a disciple, you have authority, not power. Because some things you may have the authority to do, you don't have the power to do. And here's what I like about it. What I don't have the power to do, Jesus has. But I have the authority to ask Jesus whatever I need, and he has the power to do it. Am I making sense? I'm trying to be slow about it. I'm trying to make sure I don't lose anybody. So I'm looking at the text. And it amazes me that we say in America we're looking for a more perfect union. And I've, I've been amazed at how imperfect the union is. Amen. But then here's a good opportunity for us to look and see what Jesus is trying to do. Jesus is trying to create a more perfect union between me and him. Between you and him. And he says in order to do that, you're going to have to understand why people hate on you. And, and the series is entitled Hateration for Elevation. So the more you hate it, the more you'll be elevated. So some of you are in pretty good company. Amen, lights. Here it is. The Bible is a piece of parchment. But the power comes when the people live up to their purpose. 
to the purpose that's in the Bible. When the Christian lives up to his or her purpose, it should have an impact on the people around them. So now if you're going to church, cannot change the folk in your house. then evidently your relationship with God is not what it should be. Can I ask you this question? What is he doing in your life? What kind of impact is he having in your life? How is that impacting the people who are around you? Can I say this to you? It's hard to go up with God and be down with the people. See, some of the people that God is trying to elevate you away from and above, you want to keep hanging out with them. And you wonder why you can't come up. You can't come up because you're hanging out with folk that's keeping you down. Amen, lights. You see, their response to you should be based on your response to Christ. Hmm. What they are doing to you should be based on what Christ is doing in you. So people ought to be able to look at what people are doing to you and say that's a response to what Christ is doing in you. You cannot be spiritually mature if you're not emotionally healthy. Let me slow down. You see, church is not going to help you with your mental condition alone. Some of the stuff that has you acting a fool. Y'all quiet right long through here. It's simply because your emotional state is not what it should be because your spiritual state is not what it should be. You're in unhealthy relationships and unholy relationships expecting to get a healthy and holy outcome. See, we spend a lot of time in survival mode. And you can't live your life as a Christian in survival mode. I learned a long time ago, the chances you take are based on the choices that you make. So what you ought to do is pay attention to the people that are around you. The people that you choose to allow to be around you. And how you respond to them speaks a whole lot about your relationship with God. So now let's see if I can hook this up from last week. We were on chapter, we talked about chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4. But then when you look at chapter 5, he says, love your enemies can you say love your enemies so chapter 5 says love your enemies and watch this in chapter 6 Jesus says I mean the disciples say to Jesus Lord teach us to pray let me slow down I used to be slow too Jesus say love your enemies disciples say Lord teach us to pray okay let me let me, let me. Jesus says to the disciples, love your enemies. The disciples say to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. You see, you can't love enemies until you learn how to pray. And the Bible said, and he taught them to say, our father. And some of us are still saying, our father, which art in heaven. You grown, baby. You ought to be past our father. That was in kindergarten. You ought to be past now nah, lay me down to sleep. You ought to have a grown person's prayer by now. After all the stuff you've been through, you ought to have something else to say other than our father which art in heaven. You ought to be saying, Lord, please look and have mercy. When you're going through some of the stuff you have gone through these last 18, almost 19 months, you ought to have a different prayer now. I come up in the country, some of the deacons had the same prayer. 
every Sunday. Here it is. Once more and again. To your handmade servants. Knee bent and body bow. I, I mean, you heard the same prayer. You mean to tell me it's a global prayer that everybody is singing the same prayer after all the hell we've been through? And hell's not a bad word, it's a place. Amen, light. So they say, Lord, teach us to pray. And then when you look at the text, he told them where to go, what to do, and what to say. Now get this. I need you to see this. Look in your Bible. It's in there if you didn't tear it out. Watch, watch this. He, he tells them where to go, what to do, and what to say. Where to go, what to do, what to say. And the problem with us, the reason we can't come up in Jesus is because we don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. And we don't know what to say. Watch what he tells them. He says, do not go among the Gentiles. He said, don't hang around unsaved people. He said, look, you trying to get your life together, you can't hang around people that don't have their life together. You trying to stop drinking, you can't hang around folk that's drinking. You trying to stop cussing, you can't hang around folk that's cussing. He said, don't hang around them Gentiles. Don't go among the Gentiles. But then he says this, do not go to the town of the Samaritans. See, so there's some people you don't need to be around. And there's some places that you just don't need to go. I said, there's some places you don't need to go. Let me say it again. Disciple. I'm not talking to the members. Disciples. There are some places you don't need to go. Let me name a few. Happy hour. Casino. Strip joints. I just thought I'd mention a few places. Because I know the disciples don't go. It's just the members that go. And we waiting on you to hit the lottery so you can tithe. Right. But then he says, go to the lost sheep of Israel. He says, let me tell you where to go. Go to the place and talk to the people who are going to be responsive to the word of God. Go to the people who know that they are lost and they want to be found. See, you go going to people that don't want to be saved. People that don't want to act right. People that don't want to live right. And you keep trying to talk to them. You can't put your pearls before swine. And then when you get to them, look what he tells them to do. He said, and preach. Preach what? I'm glad you asked. The kingdom of of heaven is near he said this is what you tell them you can't keep playing with this thing COVID is so indescriptive COVID is so non-discriminatory that you don't know where it's going to show up and at any moment at any time you can succumb to a virus and you got to have your house in order the kingdom is as close as the virus see if I can't make it plain you trying to avoid the virus and then your loved ones who've been out in all those places I just mentioned bring the virus to your house they haven't been vaccinated bring it to your house now you have gotten contaminated with that which they brought to your house but Willie I'm doing the best I can trying to get this stuff out of us we are tore up from the floor up 
Did you hear what I said? We are messed up. This country has lost its mind. Amen, somebody. What we need more than anything is preaching. And the church has been silent. Quiet. We scared to speak out. Because we're afraid that somebody is going to be offended. Can I say this to you? The word of God, if you just open it up and read it, it will offend you. Nobody has to preach it to you. You can just read it and find out for yourself. But let's look at the text. I need to give this to you. I'm going to get out the way. Watch this. Here's the first reason. Here's the first reason it's about him. He tells us why. Here's the reason. He says, it's clear. It's in the verse. He said, all men will hate you because of me. That, that's it. Now, when you look at the word all, let me tell you what the word all means. I want you to know. Here's what the word all means. All. You thought it was going to be something deep, didn't you? He, he said, all men will hate you. And what's interesting about this word hate, it, it's, it's a verb. It's a verb of existence. <laughs> it's a verb of existence. Watch this. So when he uses the word hate, it's an action word. It's a verb of existence. And he says, whenever hate exists, it has the ability to connect the subject and the predicate. In other words, I know I used to, didn't want to go to English either. But, but here's what happened. He says, when you have hate in you, it will predict what will come out of you. Did you hear that? So the more hate I have in you, in me, the greater I will be subject to that hate and it will make me do things that I should not do because it's predicated on the amount of hate that's in me. So now let me see if I can't make it a little more spiritual. Because he says to hate, to be hated, to be detestable. Think right now of the person or the persons that hate you. I'm going to give you some time. I know it doesn't take that long. But you got a long list you're trying to prioritize. But I want you also to think right now about the personal persons you hate. And I want to ask you this question. Is the hatred because of your relationship with Christ? Is your hatred because of their relationship with Christ? Because the text says the reason for the hatred should be Jesus. I think I said something right there. So if people are hating on you and they're not hating on you because of Jesus, then maybe you're not exemplifying enough Jesus. Y'all quiet right long today. So if people hate you for loving and following Jesus Christ, then so be it. See, therein lies the problem. Most hatred is not predicated on our relationship to Jesus Christ. Just the other day, they reported that 95,000 Afghans were brought to this country. I want you to get this. 95,000 Afghans were brought to this country. But one Mexican can't come over here. What's up with that? One Hispanic is an illegal immigrant or alien. But you can bring 95,000 Afghans over here without airline tickets. Find places for them. Find whatever they need and take care of them. But you can't bring one Hispanic over here. That's why we still have blue tops on the roof. Because there are no Hispanics coming over here. That's why your house is gutted out and you can't get the sheet rock because there are no Hispanics. Because Negroes ain't going to do that kind of work. I'm sorry, black folk. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. He said, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. See, the end is not going to come until we preach. 
And as long as we're silent, the end is not going to come. It may look bad and it looks like the end is coming, but it's not going to come until all of us start preaching. Preaching what? That the end is near. That the heaven is close at hand. The kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Look at Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened. Who have tasted the heavenly gift. Who have shared in the Holy Spirit. Who have tasted the goodness of the word of God. And the powers of the coming age. If they fall away to be brought back to repentance. Because to their loss. They are crucifying the son of God all over again. And satisfying him to public disgrace. Here's what it says. You can't be saved. And then experience all the goodness of salvation. And then walk away. And leave it behind. You can't accept Christ. And then walk away from him. As if you have never met him. It's like eating. Peach cobbler. With homemade vanilla ice cream. Once you eat that. You can't go back. To a peach pie. That's in a little bag. You, you didn't hear what I said. He said once, you, once you put that ice cream on that cobbler. I mean it's like dying and going to heaven. When you've been with Jesus. It's hard to go back to the stuff you used to do. Am I talking to anybody or am I just standing up here? When you met him for yourself, you can't just go back to doing what you used to do. John chapter 15 verse 21 says this. They will not treat you this way because of my name. For they do not know the one who sent me. See, people treat you the way they treat you because of the one you connected to. And if they're not mistreating you because of him, then you are not showing them who you connected to. You are down low secret agent Christian. You are only Sunday Christian. But see, when you show sure enough know that you know that you know that you know and you know who you know, then when you go to work on Monday, you walk up in there like Matt Dillon walking in the Long Branch Saloon. I wish some stuff would jump off up in here today. Not because you fast on the draw, but you quick in the word and you know how to tell them what God has said. You cannot allow the hatred of people to take you back to how you used to be before you met Christ. You can't stoop to that level. I'm not going to let you drive me down to that level. Have you ever thought of the level people will go to just because they hate you? I mean, they can be mean and nasty and downright evil just because they hate you. And the root cause of their hatred is your profession or your confession of Christ. So he says, here's the reason. But then he says, now let me tell you how. You can handle this hatred or this persecution. Write this down. Secondly, he said, you got to be firm. He said, but he who stands firm. How long, pastor, to the end will be saved? You can't quit in the middle. You can't quit when it gets hot. You, you got to stay till the end. And Jesus models for that. Models, us, models for us that in chapter 15. Flip over to Matthew chapter 15. I want you to see this real quick. Matthew chapter 15, verse 12. He says, then the disciples came to him and asked, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? You see, when they heard Jesus talk about tradition, they were offended. You see, people get offended when you start talking about tradition. Amen. But then drop down to verse 19. He said, for out of the heart come evil thoughts. Murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. See, it's a heart condition. <laughs> See, when, when, you, when you can't handle tradition, then it's, it's a matter of your heart. Your heart's not right. But then drop down to verse 21. Leaving that place, a Canaanite woman came to him. A person who was steeped in idolatry, in, in Canaanite gods. Somebody who didn't know their God came to the God Jesus and then dropped down to verse 29 and then Jesus left there went along the sea of Galilee then he went up on a mountainside and he sat down 
See, you got to learn that when folk don't want to hear you talk about Jesus, in the words of Martin Lawrence, get to stepping. They don't want you to talk about God. Walk away. You in the wrong company. If you own a job and they don't want you to talk about Jesus, pray, keep the job till you find another one. Don't you just up and quit talking about the spirit told you. No, no. Get another job first. Because what God is trying to say to us, we cannot be afraid to tell people where our source of strength comes from. But then watch this in Mark chapter 11 verse 18. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him. Yeah. You see, when people fear you because of your relationship with God, they look to find ways to kill you. They want to get rid of you because what they recognize is you have a better relationship with God than what they do. That's why they're trying to take you out on your job. That's why they're sending those emails because they're trying to get you out of there. But you got to understand when God is on your side, I don't care how many emails you send. Trust me when I tell you. You got to understand who is causing you to come up in this life. You brown nosing and kissing up and sucking up thinking that you're doing them, them, baby. Let me tell you, it's God that's providing some emotions. John 5, 18 says, for this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. People don't like it when you talk about what God is doing in your life. But then here's the here's, here's next thing. He says, flee. He says, flee. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. The word flee means to run away. To avoid, to shun. Go the other way. See, it's better for you to go to another city than stoop to their level of hatred. If what they do to you scares you, then you should show your commitment by standing firm to Christ. What does the Bible say about flee? Write this down. Get this. What does the Bible say about flee? Because a lot of us may be thinking I'm talking about F-L-E-A. I'm talking about F-L-E-E. -E. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 says this. Don't turn that too fast. You're not going to like this. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with the price. Therefore, honor God with your body. So now help me understand if your body belongs to God, but you keep giving it to somebody else that's not married to you. Then who are you really honoring? I'm going to the next one. Y'all got real quiet right there. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 14. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 11. But you, man of God, woman of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. But this is the one I really love. James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. You see, instead of fleeing from, we're fleeing to. There's a commercial that used to say, Calgon, take me away. Some of you in here saying, devil, take me away. Have you noticed the devil isn't bothering you as much now since COVID? I'll tell you why. Because he has you right where he wants you. You're looking at me on the screen right now. He got you right where he wants you, sitting at home. He got you. Amen, somebody. He's got you where you're comfortable. And whenever you get comfortable, be careful because sin is around the corner. 
it's because of your commitment. Brothers and sisters, it was because of your commitment to Christ that Satan decided to attack you. Every time you look up, you will come into church, choir rehearsal, Sunday school, mission meeting. Every time the church doors open, you in church. Now you're at home in your pajamas with your breakfast on the table. You watching the video, then you eating a little food. Watching the video, pastor say something you don't like, change the channel, go to somebody else and watch another preacher. Because he got you where he wants you. Brothers and sisters, James says, resist the devil and he will flee. Can I tell you what that means? You got to put up a fight. Some of us aren't very resistant. We just say, devil, just take me. I can't help it. I'm going to let you have me. But Jesus says, in essence, don't waste your time with people and places that are not good for you. I'm always intrigued by people that stay in relationships that are not good for them. I, I, I don't understand. You've been in a relationship six months and he hasn't asked you to marry him. And you still there. Don't you know that in six months he already know if he wants you or not. But you wonder why you can't get anybody else because you're sitting there waiting on him. I don't understand that. But let me tell you this, what I do understand. When you get rid of him and get Jesus, the right one will come and it won't take six months. It won't take six weeks. You'll have to hope and pray. It won't be six days. Because see, when you get your life together, you get your act together. God has a way of sending people. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Because what he understands is this. I don't want somebody that's going to take you away from me. I want somebody that's going to bring you closer to me. I, I got to get out of here. Look at this. Here's the last thing. Finish. Finish. He says, I tell you the truth. You will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. He said, in other words, when you get serious about your calling, when you get serious about your relationship with God, and you start going from city to city, preaching and teaching people about the goodness of God, he said, you won't make it through all the cities before he shows up. In other words, we're on a tight schedule. Finish means that you see the end. You understand the goal. It's to make the end of something come. Brothers and sisters, Jesus says there are enough towns to go to that you won't be able to finish the job before he gets back. You got to understand you are on a mission. He has called you to a purpose greater than you. And at one time in my life, I wanted to visit every state in the union. Why? So I could say that I've been there. Now that's about as arrogant as it can be. You see, I wanted to visit them so I could say I've been there, but I didn't want to go to make a difference. And you ought not want to just go everywhere so you can say you went. You ought to want to go so you can say I made a difference when I went to where I went. I went to the mission field. Never forget the first time. I always wanted to go to Africa, go do mission work. I had all my nice custom made suits. Had them all in my bag. Flew over to Africa, Nigeria to be exact. Flew into Lagos, Nigeria. All my nice custom made suits cologne and everything and then I was in this rinky-dink hotel and you got to remember now I've been flying all over the country people have been putting me up in nice five-star hotels and I'm in a rinky-dink hotel with cold water no hot water first day out going to preach in my custom-made black suit sharp as I want to be 
My guards come to the door, pick me up with their guns, put me in the car. No air conditioning. Drive to the first stop, preach, sweating everything in this custom-made suit. Take me out on the arm guard, take me to the next place, preach, preach all day. Eight times. Eight times. Sweating my custom-made suit. Went back to the hotel that night, took a cold shower, cold bath. Not a shower, cold bath. Got up the next day, looked at the rest of them suits, said, look. I ain't gonna even be messing y'all up. I just keep this one suit. For two weeks, I wore the same suit. Y'all didn't hear me. Because it didn't make any difference because when I got in that car, cologne wasn't working. And the perspiration wasn't working. I realized I was not there for a fashion show. I was there to win people for Christ. And some of us are so messed up. We lost track of our mission. I got to get out of here, brothers and sisters. Ask yourself, why are you committed to some of the things you committed to? Matthew 28, 19 says, it, therefore, go. Make disciples. John 9, 4 says this, as long as it's day, let me work. Because night is coming when no man can work. What if you chase after Jesus the way you chase after that man? That woman, that money, that job. What drives us many times is not to finish, but just to do a good job. But brothers and sisters, doing a good job is not enough. You want to finish. What drives us many times not to finish is fear. Look at this passage and I'm done four times. Matthew chapter 10, verse 26, verse 28, and verse 31. The word afraid is there. And I just want to ask you, what are you afraid of? If God has been good to you, if God has opened your eyes and helped you to see that everything that has happened in your life is because of him, you should not be afraid. Am I talking to anybody? Brothers and sisters, we got to come to a point in our life where we got to understand it's all because of him. The education I have is because of him. The house I live in is because of him. The children I have are because of him. The wife I have is because of him. The joy I have is because of him. The church I pastor is because of him. Everything I have is because of him. You got to come to the realization it does not matter what you have because if you don't have Jesus, you don't have much. Am I talking to anybody? I got to leave you here, brothers and sisters. What if I don't finish? Well, I've got something to tell you. I was watching the Olympics the other day. And Molly Seidel was running the women's marathon. The focus was on three women. Two women from Nigeria, from Kenya rather, and one from the United States of America. Molly was the American. And she wasn't supposed to win. But they kept focusing on Molly and these two Kenyans. And then in the background, I saw other women in the race but the camera kept focusing on Molly and the two Kenyans and the commentators kept talking about Molly, Molly, Molly and Molly but then I noticed Molly was not winning the race but can I tell you what Molly was in the race am I talking to anybody I noticed brothers and sisters they weren't worried about if Molly could win the gold. They weren't worried if Molly could win the silver. They just wanted Molly to win the bronze. And the Lord said to me, Brown, that's what's wrong with some of us in church. We're so interested in winning first place that we drop out of the race. 
But I told you, when I looked in the back, I saw other women running the race. Have I got a witness here? And I discovered it was not about winning the race, but it was about finishing the race. The 26.2 miles was run in two hours, 27 minutes and 20 seconds. There were 88 women that started the race and 15 didn't finish. Have I got a witness here? But my Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11, it says, brothers and sisters, the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but he that endures to the end. I came to tell somebody I'm in the race not to win it, but I'm in the race just to finish. Is there anybody here that's in the race with me? I said, is there anybody that's in this Christian race with me? If you don't mind, would you just stand on your feet and lift up your hands and say, Pastor, I'm in the race with you. I'm not trying to win the race. I just want to finish. Can I get a witness here? I just want to see what the end is going to be. God has blessed you to have what you have. Keep running the race. Keep fighting the race. And when it's all over, I say when it's all over, I say when it's all over, when it's all over, he gonna say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. They gonna hate on you because you're faithful. But I'm here to tell you, if you stay faithful, God will bless you. Don't you quit on God. God's been too good to you. I don't care what this virus does, don't you quit on God. So what you lost your job, don't you quit on God. So what you don't make the money you make, don't you quit on God. You stay in this race. Because when you get to the finish line, you're not going to be first. You just want to cross the line. And I don't want to just barely make it in and then stumble over the line. I want to run over the line like I intended to stay in the race. I just want to encourage you, if you're not saved, if you're not active in anybody's church, listen to me. <laughs> Don't you quit on God. I know it's rough. I know it's tough. It's hard out here. But let me tell you what's harder. Trying to fight this fight without the Lord in your life. I never would have made it. If I wouldn't have had God cheering me on, saying, Brown, you can do this. People will hate on you because God is good to you. They don't have to have a reason. They just hate you because God is good to you. You don't believe me? Get a nice car. You don't believe me? Move in a nice neighborhood. The very people who say they're your friends will stop speaking to you. I challenge you today, don't you quit on God because you don't get the accolades and the praises from people because they don't like you. If you don't like me, you don't like my God. And if you don't like my God, I don't need you to like me. Because as long as I've got God on my side, the rest of this stuff doesn't matter. I'm done. But if you're here and you're not saved, you're not active in anybody's church, you're looking for a church home, listen, I invite you to make a decision today decide how you're going to spend the rest of your life you got to get in the race in order to finish the race you, you can't run it without getting in it and you surely can't win it if you don't get in so I extend this invitation to you come walk out from where you are just come down front walk from where you are and I promise you God will give you the strength and the stamina to run the race and see what the end will be. This moment is for you. Why don't you sing that along with this praise team? If that is your testimony, you tell God that you're available to him. He wants you to be available. 
Make up in your mind. I'm available. You've been available to everybody else. You come to work on time. You do what you need to do for your husband, your wife, your children. You're available to everybody else. Why can't you be available to God? I'll do what He wants to use you. He wants to bless you. He wants to take you to another level. And there will be no elevation without some hateration. I didn't get here without people hating on me. But I've stayed because God has helped me to see where my source of strength comes from. We have done his orders, none have come, but there is still room. Come on, let's give our God a hand.